number and I am a couple minutes late on nine o'clock and if we're gonna be doing these live videos anymore I mean we are gonna be doing live videos but we're gonna to have to start at nine o'clock and I'm gonna need you to understand that and I'm apologizing for the delay because I am producer and director all in one and we are broadcasting live on YouTube simultaneously um, yeah so right now we are testing it and I'm waiting for feedback on the live video now that it's up and running the internet is really bad so I am assuming that you are seeing me. I am not seeing it as yet. And I am going to do what I can to fix that. Thank you, Flo. You're not anything but consistent. Yes? Um, so I don't know if we're being broadcasted as yet. I know we're broadcasting on YouTube. I'm seeing that that live is running. So we're good there. I don't know what's going on on Facebook. Facebook is up and running now. We're live and we're doing this. I apologize for the delay. I apologize for the quality of the broadcast. If it is not up to mark, we are limited by choices and we're trying our endeavor best to make these things happen. Um, as I was saying earlier, for those who just came, we are going to have to do this video at 9 o'clock rather than 8 o'clock because we the 8 o'clock time becoming difficult. Um, and for those who are getting it live on YouTube, I know about 181 of you got it last night, so great job. You were the inaugural viewers on the live YouTube. Um, I'm going to try and pay some more attention to y'all and your comments, your live comments as the show goes on. But the Facebook feed is the reason we do this every night. It is what built this show. Um, so, plus there's a delay on what takes place, what I get back on Facebook as opposed to what I get back on YouTube. But I was told that... The YouTube feed was excellent last night, so that is good, and um, we're going to try and maintain all of the above. I have no way of knowing the numbers, viewing me, for some reason. I don't know why that's happening, but we will take everything in stride. I know you're almost wondering why I'm talking like a robot, because I'm doing multiples of things. And if I can explain to you what those multiples of things are, we have a new Mevo system, and um, that system allows us to broadcast on YouTube. And while that is happening, I need to make sure all other Wi-Fi devices are off. The, the Mevo is controlled by an iPad, which is broadcasting it and um, the laptop where I get my information but I'm broadcasting to you on an iPhone so yeah that, that tells you we, we're getting this thing called live stream which at some point the Mevo is supposed to do all of the broadcasts to Facebook and YouTube and and the Mevo is really good at the touch screen I can do anything with the with the viewer with the uh, broadcast on a touch screen on the ipad but i don't have the feedback that i get with you here and felix dami said the feed sticking really bad on my side flow you all are horrible 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 flow you're horrible flow you're horrible we pay we pay for the biggest package flow offers that costs me. I, I have my bill right now. I think is about two thousand dollars, and we have to go and pay that this week. We pay for the highest package flow offers. Uh, I just got a number. It's two fifty three. That's still small. I'm gonna share it. You should share it too. 
I need to also get Maya to adjust the um, get Maya to adjust the for the people on the YouTube. If you've not seen the cup before, um, yeah. So their camera is behind your camera. I need Maya to adjust the notification on the pep app to let people know that we come on now at 9 o'clock at least for a little while there are meetings all day now and um, I'm not getting it's, it's very difficult scheduling my life around all the stuff that we're doing I'm not complaining I'm just letting you know that there's a reason we're trying to do it at 9 o'clock instead of the 8 o'clock because we will end up running late regularly um, anyway we weren't even supposed to be doing a video tonight, but some of the people who shall we name nameless that insist that we do the live video, here we are. Um, and I, I came on board to do it because there's something I want to discuss with you. And while we build some viewers, I will, and please share the video on your own. Share the video to all the groups that you're in. Share the video to every page you're on. Now, there's a guy last night, he shared the video 50 times. That's not what I mean. You only need to share it once on your page and it goes into the newsfeed. But share it on other groups and threads that you're on so people who are not our friends or your friends or members that would still get a chance to see it, yeah? And that's what I do in the first couple of minutes. There are about 10 groups that I'm a member of, so I share it there. And we get feedback from right around, and that's what builds the numbers. If Flo could handle numbers beyond 286 tonight, I don't know. It seems to be in their best interest, whoever, wherever. It's like, let me tell you something. I'm not the richest man in the world by any stretch of the imagination. I take care of my business myself. And so I have a personal savings account that I make sure has a certain amount of funds in it. That if I go out, I could spend some money and I know that it will have some money in it. Anyway, long story short, this Friday night, we went out and I was contributing to the overall bill and I gave my card and they said, no, insufficient funds. So I said, no problem. I take it in stride. I said, what did I do? Why must I spend this money on something? Because it would have been a couple thousand dollars. So I went in the bank on Saturday in Scotia Bank and I put my card in the machine. And the card said my balance was $40.99. I told myself, I must have spent that money. I can't remember. These things happen. Went into the bank on Monday to do normal business transactions. While I was there, I asked them, I said, look, I don't know what exactly went on and I could be to blame. But could you tell me what happened between Friday afternoon when I was in the bank and Friday night? That because what did I do? I'm trying to remember what I spent the money on. And they and they took me, they went into the account, they took the card, and and the manager, the sweetest customer service manager of any bank, and I apologize to all the other customer service managers I ever knew, but the customer service manager at Scotia Bank Starlight, I think, is what keeps that bank in business still. She is amazing, Diana Tardy, and I want to point that out to her because she juggles. And I watch this woman deal with so many issues at the same time and without losing stride and without losing her pleasant disposition. And it's because of her I didn't cuss. Because when they came back to me, they said, well, apparently, because I pay my mortgage with a check and apparently because i paid my mortgage last week and i always pay my mortgage a little i round it off up because i believe in trying to keep my credit rating nice and happy so i knew that i paid my mortgage first week in the month they said somebody made a mistake and they deducted my mortgage from my personal sales guy i said but who gave anybody authority to do that in the first place so we're going to look into it but we reversed the transaction so all's well but all wasn't well because it was embarrassing to me Friday night and I took it in stride and I had to laugh at me and laugh at the situation and I took it in stride. 
But what if it was a what if I had ended up in a situation on Friday night where I had to take a member of my family to the hospital and we had gotten to say St. Clair Medical Center and they're gonna want their two thousand dollar deposit or my family member, no matter what they're dying from, can't get inside the hospital. What happens if they had swiped my car and said insufficient funds? Because of a bank error, I'd be in a jam. And I don't I don't think the bank fully understood what it did mean. A woman called me tonight, or actually she messaged me on Facebook, and I have to meet her and her husband this week. Because, and, and this, I mean, I'm getting sidetracked, because I start talking about flow and those who have a vested interest in keeping our numbers down. And Because if we pay for the biggest fee that you have flow, and this is the biggest fee you have flow, this show is an, is, is an advertisement for your incompetence. And at some point, we will get beyond this, you know. But anyway, this woman called me, messaged me to say, you see, I had, and as a little segue, a lot of my closest people, sister, family, people, people, closest people, want me to stop calling the names of my haters or the people who attack me. And they want me to not respond in kind, and they want me to take the high road and to start to come across a little more prime ministerial. I'm going to deal with this issue of prime ministerial later. But an, another person put out a video. I'm not going to call anybody's name anymore. Put out a video. Challenging a video that I had put out. A priest added me as a friend today just because he's trying to track down this video. And as I'm here, my God, it's third segue. I, I'll, I'll forget everything I'm trying to tell you. Pop. If any of you have a recorded, you know, I know a lot of you, because this video costs a million views. I know a lot of you rip the videos that I do, the shorter videos, and keep them and share them on WhatsApp and stuff. If any of you have the video, because I don't have it and I don't know why I don't have it, but I don't have the video of the Republic Bank repossessing that lady's car and, and, and the, the bailiffs in her yard without, without paperwork and stuff. If you know what I'm talking about, if you could shoot me a link to that, wherever you have it saved, I'd appreciate it. I'll rip it back because I need to get that because a priest added me today. He's just trying to track this down. And myself and Maya, for some reason, we can't find it. So if you have a copy of it, somebody had sent it to me the other day in, on their mail out list on WhatsApp. I guess because they didn't realize they sent it to me as well. But if you have it, that video, it was me out of in a black shirt, black tie, black jacket. And I remember that. So if you have that video, you can send it back to me, much appreciated. But in that video, I spoke about a woman whose car was repossessed by the bank. And when she went the next morning to pay the bank and bring her account up to date, the bank refused. And they said she couldn't bring her account up to date. She needs to pay off her entire account, which amounted to $130,000. And she had to decide how she was going to come to terms with the loss of all the money she spent on this car so far. Now, there, there's this nonsense that we all accept, and we accept so much nonsense. None of this is why we're doing this video tonight. But we're just talking about this as we're talking. There are something we have to talk about. But, but there's this nonsense we accept that when you drive off the lot, a third of the value of your car is gone or some foolishness like that. And I think that's stupidness. I we just stop accepting nonsense like that. A car should depreciate. If you say the life cycle of a car is five years, then multiply that by 365 and take off a day at a time. Or work out a, an algorithm that we could work it by. But don't tell me a third comes off because I drove it off the lot. That's madness. But anyway, I get a lot of texts from some people who normally wouldn't text. So I have to check and see if something is going on somewhere. And yes, thank you very much for sending it back to me. Mr. Crosby, you're spot on. Thank you. Nobody else send it. I've gotten the video I'm looking for. Father, I'll be sending the video for you after the show. Um, yeah. So, anyway. So, all the money that she spent buying the car, because the car was a year old, and all the money that she had spent paying down the car, and all the money that she spent in payments on the car, which total a sizable chunk of the car, she had to decide if she could take that hit and walk away. Now, the car is owing $130,000 and is her car. 
And she had, she had to decide if she was going to leave that. But I told her, even if you say you are writing off that 130000 you take that loss, that bank is going to sell that car. And they're not going to get $130,000 for that car. They're going to get about sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars 80000 if you're lucky. And then they're going to come back to you again for the difference. And if you do not pay that, they will go to the courts and get a judgment against you. And this is what is happening now to, to the gentleman in Tobago whose, whose, his house and hotel, his little hotel, is, is located right where the bank, right, right where Sandals wants their entrance to go and the bank has seized his property and is advertising it. And a woman called me, messaged me, and I'm meeting her and her husband because she said they've done her that. Now, now my friend, she found me $130,000 and she has her car and she paid off the bank, much to the bank's chagrin because the bank wasn't happy with that. And I'm trying to understand why. I'm trying to understand why the bank would have this authority. Two weeks later, I had to go by my brother-in-law next door to my brother-in-law, this gentleman. He was ailing. He's in a couple months arrears on his home that he spent millions of dollars on. And all of his belongings are on a side street in Pity Valley. In his multi-million dollar home, he can't finish paying the bank. The bank has recalled the loan. Forget him. And this woman that messaged me tonight, she doesn't know where else to turn. Another woman messaged me and she said, she said, she said, Mr. Alexander, this thing escalated. I lost my, I lost my job. I lost, I lost my home because I lost my job. Me and my daughter living in the car. We living in the car. And bailiffs come and put us out the car at three months in arrears. I don't know where to turn. The woman telling me that the, the, the only option for her is to drink Lanate. And I'm, and, and, I'm, and, and I'm saying to her, that's not the only option you have. But now, because of that video, everybody finding me and bringing their stories to me. And now I have to go talk to these people tomorrow and find out about their land. And, how, and the bank has done them the same. Because they've, they've run afoul of a couple months, the banks are recalling the loans. And most of the time, it is Republic Bank. So what is going on with Republic Bank? Because I want to say this to Trinidad and Tobago. It is taxpayer money that rescued Republic Bank when Lawrence Dupre, Dupre and the band of thieves that were running Clico raided that company. It is Trinidad taxpayers that own Republic Bank, the majority of shares, or at least as as at, as the last time I checked, I told it could be Samga owned it today and Imbut sell it to him under the table, friend from friendland bullshit. That's what's going on in this country. But it is tax, and I don't want to lose my temper, but it is taxpayer money that rescue and right size Republic Bank. And Republic Bank now is moving like an evil son of a bitch against the people of this country. And there is nobody, nowhere, that people could turn to and say, look, I need help. If you have equity in something, it demonstrates a willingness to contribute positively to society. If you have been paying your loans, and but for some reason, because I remember having somebody in my life, a friend of mine, he's dead now, uh, Fidel Gonzalez was his name, and he used to tell me, you must, you must prepare for the vicissitudes of life. Things happen. And I remember that, that word. I had to go and research what vicissitudes mean. Th it, it, means it means things go wrong. Things happen. And, and you must be ready to manage and deal with that. But people should have somewhere to turn to. Somebody to turn to when these things happen. There should be some organization easy for me to turn to to report flow. Flo is owing me money. In a real rational and reasonable world, every time Flo doesn't give me what I pay for, Flo should pay me back. I am buying time and internet from Flo. If you don't give me that, you have to pay me back. Scotiabank should have paid me a, a reward. Not a reward. There should have been a penalty. If I was late with my mortgage, there'd be a penalty. They've taken my mortgage out twice, there should be a penalty. It should, it should affect the bank as well. Because I want to think there was some malicious act that would have done this. You would have realized that it could have caused me some stress. We can't have, we can't have that when it comes to the citizens, that, that every 
advantage works against them. We can't have that. And that brings me to this. And in fact, I am impressed that please, everybody who's sending me the messages, until, unless something is on fire, don't send me any more messages because it distracts me. Okay, I don't have to turn over my phone in case something really does happen. So, so unless something is going on, don't message me now. Um, this actually allows me to segue into what I really wanted to talk about tonight. Because there is a gentleman that I, well, I, don't, I can't say converse with, he converses with me. I don't answer him. He sends me stuff. My sweet, loving Jesus, this internet is like molasses running uphill. Flow? You don't flow. Change your name to slow. Anyway. And I need to actually quote the actual quote. So I'm going to have to do some manic adjusting right now. Because I want the actual quote. Yeah? So... Apologies in advance. Um, keeping talking while this is happening so that you understand. I know I'm seeing that you're all saying that you feel fine by you, but by me is real stress. And I try to um, get. But he basically said this to me today. And the well being of the people is the primary responsibility of government. I want you to hear that again. And I'll read the actual quote when I get it. But those words more or less sum it up. And that is, the well-being of the people of the country is the primary responsibility of the government. It's the reason government exists. It is the purpose for having government. The well-being of the people. I want to see. Okay. Give me a minute. I want to. I want to see something here. My God, you almost think I am so out of it tonight. But no, I am actually seriously on the seriously on the text. Just the test. Right. Some of them don't know like I'm on live now. Um, yeah. The reason and rationale for government existence is the well-being of the people. So that brought me back to this. Because people who are having problems with the bank and people who are having problems with any service of any kind I'm seeing the YouTube giving some problems. I don't know. I, I don't know if I have. Good night, everyone. Anybody on the YouTube feed? Sorry about this. Eh? Anybody on the YouTube feed? That if you're having any problem with the feed, let me know, please. Um, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Um, because I'm seeing. I don't know. I can't. I can't tell. If this is, my God, I can't even get on Facebook. Right. So, I guess I'll use my phone because my phone is on. This is crazy. Everything else is on flow. But my phone is on the mobile. So let's have a race. Let's have a race. And I'm already on flow. The mobile you want tonight. Flow! The welfare of the people is the primary responsibility of government. I remembered it correctly. Okay. Because I have posted. <laughs> I just got a message that said YouTube could suck it. I just got um, everything that we talk about. Everything that we talk about that is anything to do with the operation of society is the responsibility of government. Everything. Everything. The management of the social fabric. Dealing with poverty. 
managing the financial sector, securing the nation, feeding the people, water, the quality of the water, the conditions of the roads, how people interact with each other, the happiness index. You have responsibility for everybody. You have responsibility for the entire nation. You govern. You are the government. This is your responsibility. I posted a picture of a young chap by Superfarm washing windows, trying to explain to people that even if he comes from a failed community, a lot of us who live in the West, we drive past two streets called Coco Ridge. Waterhole, hard in place, collectively Coco Ridge. And we don't even look there. It's blocked off by the community seven day hospital and a big ficus tree. On the other side of the road is Bayside Towers. So we don't have to pay attention to the 25, 30,000 people living in that bowl inside of there because it's an actual bowl. And if you drive into Coco Reed, the minute I'm telling you, right, in the West, you are driving along the road and there are million dollar apartments and houses all around you. But if you stop and turn left, on Lady Hojoy's circular, you drive into insane poverty. You drive into homelessness, despair, desperation. You drive into a place where gun violence breaks out in the street between houses. You drive, you, you are in a place where when rain falls, it comes down the mountain through people's homes. It is absolutely insane what Kokorit is. And if you've never been inside Kokorit, drive in. Don't go in the night. Don't go too far. But drive in Kokorit. If you ever wanted to see what the television version, the textbook definition of small island poverty looks like, Go stand and watch that bowl and you will see thousands of little hovels, huts, shacks carved into the mountain, juxtaposed against each other, cheek by jowl, up and down. You will see things that remind you of the favela ghettos and things that you think of that only exist in places like Brazil come into Kokorit and it's right there. Everybody who leaves the West, who leaves Goodwood Park, Bayshore, Regions, um, Admiral, what do you call this place? Columbus Circle, Victoria Gardens, Goodwood Gardens, all the thousands of you drive past these people living in desperation, squalid, squalid conditions. Now, we middle class people, for want of a better term, have this twisted notion that these people come out of their mother's vaginas and are given options. You can have a good life and live in Goodwood Park, or you can choose to be a bandit and a criminal and wipe windows and hustle and dodge bullets. Goodwood Park, bullet dodging. Which do you choose? Which do you choose? Because we in the middle class, for want of a better term, think that the same life that we got Everybody got. We have this 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 delusion that once we belly full, everybody belly full. I've spoken to people and I couldn't believe what comes out of what has to be otherwise intelligent people's mouths. Fire truck them, burn them down, you can't save them, that whole generation and ago. Kill all. This is the kind of nonsense otherwise sensible and intelligent people say. It. And then we're having a conversation because the reason for posting this picture is not to embarrass the boy, but it is to show that this boy, must be 11 or 12, is already hustling a living 
in the third richest nation in the Western Hemisphere, wiping windscreens, breathing car fumes, dodging traffic to live. And to the people who come and just cuss me, because it racist, and you're a racist, and you want to show yourself giving a black boy a two dollars, I gotta take that. That's what you think. If that's your first reaction, if that's your go-to gear, if that's all you have to bring to the conversation, I cannot help you. Arguing with you, there's a saying, arguing with people devoid of reason is an absolute waste of time. I can't, I can't instruct you how to think. They say you can lead a horse to water, can't make it drink. You can lead a person to a conversation, but you can't make them think. And, I'm, and I showed this boy because he's wearing a PNM jersey. And Keith Rowley is a member of parliament for 31 years. I know, I know about Rich Plain, La Puerta, Bagatelle, Covey, Mason, Factory Road, Lansmitan, Abi Pujad, Big Yard, and Kokori. If I know, how oh, he don't know. And he's a member of parliament for 31 years. In his office, there should be maps of every street. He should know everywhere. He should know where every standpipe on every corner is. Because if you don't understand this, and if I cannot get you to understand this, I have to get out of politics. Because if you don't have a basic understanding of what representation of the people means, there's nothing I can do. If you think that vote black because you're black is representation of the people, and you get black and take that, I can't help you. Cannot help you. But if you stop for a second to listen, just to understand, because Keith Rowley is in St. Augustine tomorrow night, and I have every intention, I don't know if I will do it, but I found out tonight, of putting on my orange jersey and going to that meeting and waiting for the open mic to walk up to the microphone and ask Keith Rowley and say, this question is for the Prime Minister. Sir, do you believe that according to the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the document that speaks your post and position into existence, the document that creates the framework that manifests in your salary check at the end of the month, that gives you the rights and the privileges you have as Prime Minister. Do you believe, sir, according to that document, the supreme law of Trinidad and Tobago, that your primary responsibility is chief servant of the people? Because that's a question that we need to ask. And that's a question that Trinidadians need to understand. That the man in licensing office on the other side of the desk works for you. I don't want you to take it from an arrogant position and go in licensing office and give like a jackass. Hey, work for me. You pay my, I pay your salary. Go on, go, do what I tell you. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying to you that you need to understand that anybody in the public service are servants. That's what the service in public service is. That they are servants of those who pay their salary. The people, the taxpayers. That's what public service means. The prime minister is the chief servant of all the servants. He's not Lord High Puba. He is the biggest servant. He has primary service responsibility above all. And you need to grasp this. You need to grasp it in the oil field on the oil barges. Just tell you, they have an alarm. The, one of the first things is learn when you go into the oil field in the sea, especially in the North Sea. They tell you, there's an alarm. When you hear it, grab your life vest here and hold it to prevent it because you're going to jump off the edge of the barge. But before you jump off the edge of the barge, grab your life vest here and Hold it. And don't let go because it could pop up and pop your neck. And with your other hand, for men, hold your two testicles tight in your hand because it could run up in your chest. 
This is not bullshit. Ask anybody in the oil industry. One hand on your testicles, and the other hand here. You're protecting your life and your balls. And, and with that kind of grip, I want you to grip onto this knowledge. And yes, I say it like that so you understand. In the old days, long, long ago in Egypt, when a father was passing on information to his son, and he said, son, this is critical information. You must never forget what I'm about to tell you as long as you live. And then he says it and slaps him as hard as he could across his face. That slap becomes a memory. And it comes attached with all of the information that he just gave you. Let's do this again. The Prime Minister's job, when he sits on the chair in St. Clair Avenue, if he ever goes there at all, is to be concerned about that little black boy who is hustling, wiping windscreen to survive. And he needs to make sure that the equity of state and all of our policies and programs include this little black boy who has rights as a stakeholder and a shareholder in this country as much as the people in the Chamber of Commerce a hundred meters from where he wiped glass. And if you've elected into office a man or a woman who doesn't understand that there are two people at fault, him or her, and you. Him or, him, or, him or her, and you. Because you're supposed to say, and tomorrow in St. Augustine, don't go to giggle and glee. Go. And all the problems, my friend, you who messaged me today with the Republic Bank problem with your land, Go there. That's the prime minister's responsibility. He could pass you on to somebody else, but they better be oversight. Because follow him everywhere he goes. This is not a gathering for trained seals. I have no doubt. Stuarty boy and Frankie. Look at Frankie now. Look at Frankie tonight. You all envy Frankie? I don't envy Frankie. Frankie say, I know not the man. It's like Peter. When they, was, when, when they had crucified Christ, the disciples, the, the 12 apostles, well, they left now because Judas and himself, the remaining apostles were in a panic because this man who could summon the ocean to rest, who could stop storms, who raised Lazarus. So funny life is Keith Rowley's campaign manager is Jackie Lazarus. Anyway, this man who raised Lazarus from the dead, they crucified him. And if they crucified him, they could crucify all of we. So everybody started to panic. And Peter, the rock upon who Christ said, I will build my church. A woman said, you was with him? He said, nah. You was with him? I see only not me, wrong man. I tell you, it's you. He said, lady, I know not the man. Franklin can said that about Nazim. And now, pictures have surfaced of Frank Hinker hugging up Nazim. Keith Rowley posing with Nazim. I don't envy you all, huh? I don't envy you all at all. I don't envy you all at all. Not even a little bit. But somebody said this something called, what is the name of this thing? My God, do I have this saved? There's something called the Power Manifesto. I don't have it saved. The Power Manifesto is a political playbook, and one of the plays and one of the paragraphs they tell you how scandalizing and defaming is one of the best ways to discourage others from coming into the political arena. And that's written in the book. And clearly the PNM and the UNC playing from that book. And they're attacking me seven months now. And I know that now that I have 57,000 followers on Facebook, 
And that's just Facebook. I hear they call me the Prime Minister of Facebook. No problem. Prime Minister of Facebook will, will do for now. 57,000 followers. Some of my attackers don't have 200. 57,000 followers. And they have to be asking, as the party grows from strength to strength, when their teams gather, they must be asking, what's the next thing they say in that book, boy? This one I want, yeah? Because I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. It's not left for you to say. It's not left for you to say about me, your litanies, as long as they are. So to all the people who you just get all that mulch, they said the real Philip Alexander thing. Share it with me. I see everything. I own a list of, of news, WhatsApp trends. As people get gunned down, shot, murdered, raped, bludgeoned, killed, fire start, fire done, the thing blow up, I just get it live. So trust me, I have it. I see it. And those we had to deal with, we will deal with. I ain't going down that road, but I just want to tell you all. What will they do next? What will they do next? A political, I mean, that's the page that opened. A political scientist wrote on the blogs today, because I'm, 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 I'm fighting with another political scientist. Actually, I can find it here, because I had to ask him, because he calls me a wannabe prime minister. And I had to ask him, in that conversation, do I have that? <laughs> I said, he says, this is what he said, eh? and I want you to hear that and my response. And I'm reading all of it, sorry about that. He says, please take your deposit to some poor folks who deserve it rather than giving it to the Elections and Boundaries Commission. And I said to him in that conversation, because others weighed in, somebody said full support for Philip and all those who are trying to break up the racist, tribal, backward PNM, UNC political stranglehold, drain the stinking swamp, mash up the status quo, and who have enlightened, modern, and unrealistic vision for TNT in the 21st century and beyond. Let's encourage more people to participate and be involved. But this particular gentleman that I'm dealing with, he is one of those people that when election time comes around, that they invite onto the television to give their opinion between the PNM and the UNC. And I had to ask him, and he told me about the deposit. I said, what does that make you? Your entire life is spent on the sidelines commenting on the actions of others. Ever heard the literal admonition, get a life? When do you stop talking and actually do something? What becomes of you when traditional media needing spin doctoring, talking heads is no more? What have you done? A corner stool in your local bar, drunk and bitching about what you could have been? Who takes you seriously anymore? Where? You talk of deposits being lost. What do you venture? What have you gained? Honestly, where do you go when there is no more need of political lapdogs and talking heads for hire? Where? Let me know. You see, I don't understand. Eh? I know the size of the mountain in front of me. You can't embarrass me by telling me the size of the journey I want. I will never be blacker, and I will never be whiter, and I will never be a hypocrite or a liar. So when you see I eviscerate my attackers, it's because I know, I want them to know that don't, don't threaten me with vote or loss of office. That's not what I'm this for. That's not what I'm for. Everywhere I go, people stop and shake my hand. I don't care if it's 10. I don't care if it's 20. I remember reading a story about a little boy on a beach covered in starfish, throwing, throwing them back in the water. And I fell asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm putting the starfish back in the sea so they don't die. He said, you could never help all of them. And he said, I help this one. And that's how you had to be. And that's how you had to think. If I open one eye, 
open one mind, embolden one person to stand up, go in and you see, you never know. When we created in the Jericho project, the care packages, when we created that, we used to go downtown and give, we used to collect from our members and do these nice packages, towel, personal hygiene, toilet paper, toothbrush, shampoo, conditioner. The first time we handed these out to homeless people in town, people cried. People cried. One man said to me, you all really see us as people. And that spawned other people. Junior Sammy, pick up some little Indian children and call them one for one. Give them some money to go and copy and do the same thing we're doing in town in South. And I applauded. Because they have homeless people everywhere. And I don't care your intentions. And I don't care your motives once you're helping people. But a young gentleman did it too. And, and it got media. And he ended up on TV. And he ended up in the United Nations doing a presentation on something that we started. One person at a time. Don't it? And if every time we send a positive spin into society. At some point. Like that little boy. Somebody might stand up in the right place or who might be in a critical position to effect change. It does not have to be me. My vision for my future is a retirement in a little room where I could write and my own little bakery. I want a view of the Mediterranean Sea. I don't want to be pretending. These people put on suit and tie to go and pretend to be something they're not. Led by their ego. I am driven by the, by, by my, the admonitions I've had for all of my life. To whom much is given, much is expected. And bloom where you're planted. So I'm, so I'm here. I'm here in Trinidad. I'm here in Trinidad. In 2008, in 2008, October 10th, my mother's birthday, I made a commitment, I made a promise that I will serve for 10 years. That ends October 10th next year. I still am keeping that promise. Jericho Project waves through the lowest social levels of society. The, the, the disabled, the homeless, the orphans. People are asking, where your base? At my base. I go running around the Savannah, homeless people know my name. Philip, what's going on? Yeah, right. For years, my son and his friends grow up feeding homeless people Christmas Day. That's their Christmas. And not a, a, a young lady just the other day, I can't remember her name, I was going to give her credit right now. She used to come out every Christmas and help us. She just passed away and I don't understand where she died from. Beautiful young lady. She used to come in her Mercedes Benz Christmas morning and back up and come and join us. A friend, of, a mutual friend of mine and Edmund Moy. Moy, if you're paying attention, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, our role is not to win. If our role was to win, I'd be hugging up and making friends and, and, and what Kirk Wade tell me is network, boy, Philip. Network. Network yourself. I'm not in this to network myself. A lot of the people that exist in the political sphere today, I despise. I have no good wishes for. People took umbrage that I said of this UNC financier who made billions off of the Kamala Prasad regime, that I wish him an eternity of torment like I wished for Malcolm Jones, Manning's GTL guy in Petrotrain. Look what's going on in Petrotrain now. You think all of these prime ministers, chief servants, don't know what's going on in their name? They come into office and they cherry pick quick. Put him in NGC, put him in Petrotrin, put her in, in and all the key positions. I read the numbers for y'all last night about the budgets. I read the numbers for y'all. The big ticket items. You go in there and you collect the money for the party, the tribe, the clan. We share it up. Big Papi get five, I get three, you get two, that one get one, and we're happy. But that's not the role of government. Government's role, afraid to click this Facebook again. 
Who were kind of, who kind of, who were kind of the the welfare of the people is the primary responsible of government responsibility of government. So let's say what that means tonight. The ministers of national security, together with the chief of defense staff, the commander of the coast guard, and the commissioner of police, should be meeting tonight. Because every time a citizen of the republic gets murdered, they should be allowed a restful night of sleep. They should be responsible for the salaries that they draw in, the positions that they have in society. They should be responsible to you for it. And their collective existence, let me tell you that again, the chief of defense staff, the commander of the coast guard, the commissioner of police, and the minister of national security, collectively are responsible for the safety of every member of society. Every time somebody dies, they fail. Miserably. And then you have to add to that social development. Because social development is who is supposed to go into Kokorit with this little boy hustling, wiping window to live and give him hope and opportunity. Because I tried to explain to somebody the reason that you need to deal with this at this stage because he's cute and hustling now but he will grow up without options and when he can no longer be cute wiping your glass he's going to be obscene breaking in your house or putting a gun in your face because according to Maslow and the hierarchy of needs there are a couple of things that are inescapable we have to eat we must get some water in Trinidad, you can't find a standby anyway. The only time you get water to drink now, you have to buy blue waters. That's three, four, or five dollars. Where he getting that? When you're no longer willing to pay him to wipe your glass. Where you getting it? And he still had to come and get it from you. If he has no hope and no opportunity, do you think he rolls over and dies? Selfishly, demand that there be a social intervention in all of the hotspots that bring them out of crime. Because if you're so warped and twisted in your mind to believe that people choose crime, I can't help you. By education, failure. It's failure. It's failure. But if you understand where I'm coming from, that you as voter, you as citizen, you direct the government and you tell the government it is unacceptable that we have that level of poverty. Fix it down. You go and tell the Prime Minister it is unacceptable that this is our murder level. Fix it now. Or that we are a narco state. Fix it now. Or that people are trafficked out of this country. Fix it now. Go to the Prime Minister and tell him it is, it is madness that our healthcare sector is this obscene. Fix it now. That our education sector is producing vast majority of functional illiterates, not educated enough to pick out a picture of a burger and fries on a cash register. Fix that now. You are wasting these young people's lives and you are consigning them to a future of desperation and squalor and virtual slavery, working and slaving for minimum wage till the dead. Fix that now. The price of food, Mr. Prime Minister, if we are not growing food and we're importing all our food, we'll be forever at the mercy of the food growers. And if they ever choose to stop supplying us, what will we eat? Food independence should be job one. We have the land, the climate, the water, the soil, the farmers, the workers, we have everything we need. Put everything together. Grow food. Fix that now. This is your role as citizen. Iceland understands it. Holland, Sweden, Germany, Finland. Finland has the highest standard of education in the entire world. Finland's standard of education is so high. The next four, if you add them up, do come second. 
is Finland and then fifth place. The gap is so massive. And what's Finland's policy? No child left behind. Do not segregate. Ten-year schools, GPA, monitor, everything we tell you. Because I tell you this, success leaves clues. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Singapore is the best in the world at port. Go and get somebody from Singapore and hire them. Fix our port. We're losing a billion dollars a year. If you lose 900 million next year, you already win. You save us 100 million dollars. And the objective is not even to turn a profit. Get us close to zero because we're losing a billion dollars a year. Go to New Orleans or Holland and bring an engineer, a drainage engineer, a water management engineer because those two places are permanently on the sea level. You see when Trinidad flood, you take a picture of the flood, you see rainfall for five minutes and it flood, and then somebody's come on the conversation, we're jamming still, and our next one has come, or there's jackasses, or they realize it tied in. So I always have to say, there are countries, whether they tied in or out, they are permanently on the sea level. And no matter what, when rain falls, they don't become swimming pools. So clearly, there is technology and knowledge available. And the Romans invented aqueducts that used to take water over the mountains. So we know that it is possible. We just need the political will. And the political will comes from the people. You, me, we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we tell governments what to do. We tell them. We tell governments how the country should be run. We tell them what we want done. And the Progressive Empowerment Party tells you that I don't care which government does it, but security of the person, home ownership for all, food that you could afford, education that delivers, and health care that works. You see those five things? Those should be non-negotiable. Tell Rowley that. Tell Kamala, we are not hiring you back, Kamala. Because you had five years and you ignore these five things. You did everything else. You did everything else, but you left our farmlands going raising us. And our education system still functionally dysfunctional. Our health sector, you made it worse, not better. National security under you had a brief spark with Gary Griffin, but you traded him for politics, so you didn't care. And home ownership has always been a lie, as you'll take funding from the banksters and those financiers that are in interlocking directorates and shareholders in the financial institutions. In this country, we have never had a government that put the people first. We have heard them say so. We've heard Indian-looking faces say to Indian-looking people, if you vote for me, the blacks go suffer. That's what it's telling you, you know. And the blacks is do the same thing. We time now, we care, red and ready. All that means, stick your finger in Indian eye. That's what it means, you know. That's what it means. That if you vote black, Indian will suffer. I mean, it's, 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 an, it's an absolute travesty that 55 years later, 2017, every one of you watching this video tonight, are watching a live video broadcast. Five years ago, we didn't think that it was possible. Ten years ago, a smartphone didn't exist. Twenty years ago, there was no internet. You are living in the most amazing time in human history to be alive. You have power and the ability to use that power in ways you will never understand or fully appreciate until it's too late. But for right now, I say to you, think it through. Think it through. Somebody has to be responsible for the management of the country. If you do not understand that it is the Prime Minister and his government, then I can't help you. And if you don't understand that that little black boy from Kokorit has rights, not that he has to come and find you. Don't tell me about the programs you think exist for him. As long as he is outside there hustling, we fail him. Because he's a little boy. We don't know his value systems and his intellectual toolkit. We have no idea. But we're measuring him by our standard and judging him and consigning him to a life of failure. Why? Because we are irresponsible with our democracy. And we have to stop that. 
We need to say there must be truancy laws, there must be social development that comes and intervenes and takes these, whoever they are, people suffering and falling through the cracks and right size them. Give them a better chance at life. Because if we don't, if we only focus on ourselves in our gated community, raising our children alongside other children who will never have the chances our children get, at some point, when it is too late for us to help them, we would have created two things. We would have created successful children and the people who come in to rob, rape, and murder them for what they have. We create them both. No one raindrop ever considers itself cause the flood, but all contribute. At the end of the day, and I keep saying this, you will let that gated community fool you for as long as you could stay behind the gate. Worse. The day the society collapses and social order fails, do not think that you can rely on those who man in the gates to still be there. You have a responsibility to this country to not need a gated community. And if you do not get that, if you do not understand that because of your position, because of your fortunate position, you have the ability to speak truth to power, if you are not doing it, if you are abdicating your responsibility and not getting involved and driving change, when I hear that you get murdered for $25,000 you take out of the bank, I'm not crying no tears for you. You have to understand. Each and every one of us have to bring to the table what we could. But our first responsibility is to ensure that the government that we elect serves all of the people of Trinidad and Tobago equally and equitably. That everybody are entitled to the same good service, the same high level of service and justice from every organization of state. Because if that does not exist, if you continue to live in a double tiered unequal society, at some point it will grow and spawn and create your demise. You are the author of that. And if I could accomplish anything at all, ever, with my life, is to get all of you to understand that tonight, so that at some point, maybe, collectively, we could start to act like one people under one flag, and start to see governments as servants of the people, and demand that all of our people get treated better, that we, as a nation, become functional, so that we could go forward in peace, and harmony, no wrought iron, no security guard, none of this nonsense. We need to be able to think this through because if we don't, and if we don't act in our own best interests, we will work against ourselves. Watch this video just to hear this song. Register and vote them out. It sounds very glorifying. Trust me, I'm not using it for those props and those points. But the person is a well-known political scientist and that he would say this about me in the blogs, surrounded by people who are doing their best to attack. This is where all of the conversation taking place at the highest level. And that he would put that out there, open that door. And he said this, I will say this much in relation to Philip Alexander, as I have known him for some years now. 
Maybe Gideon can elaborate as they were bedfellows at one time in the COP. Philip, from what I know, is a selfless person who gives without expecting reward. We have met on various times over the years and discussed and shared ideas about national development. Philip is indefatigable and is a very brilliant and intelligent man. He is a digital leader like no other in this country. He has been courageous to venture into the political arena and has not latched on to any party or individual for validation or support. Because he is so far ahead of many older heads, he can identify a problem and tell you what needs to be done to rectify the problem. He is well resourced in terms of information from the bureaucracy and knows exactly where information can be obtained. All of this has caused a bit of jealousy by money launderers and others with political tabanka. He has gone where no other has gone before. Should I say, give the man a chance? Philip does not need me nor anyone to endorse, endorse him. He is akin to a superhero, and this is why the PNM is taking him so seriously. I thank you for that endorsement. If you could, please share the videos, share the YouTube videos, mail it out to your friends, all of those watching on YouTube, if you could do me a favor, share the link in an email with all your friends and invite them to subscribe to the YouTube channel because once we go live, we're going live on Facebook and YouTube same time. Sarah Nami is the head of the children's arm, which will be all encompassing and speak for gender and of the PEP. Sarah Nami sent me a message. She asked, where is the children authority to investigate why he is not in school and working? Child labor is supposed to be illegal. She raised an issue about a child who was sold in this country into slavery, a Trinidadian child whose family sold the girl to another family. And she asked and she raised the point. From the moment you are from the moment you are born, there's supposed to be a record of you and everything until you die. And along the way, certain people are supposed to automatically get information to expect you at the age of five. Why didn't the Ministry of Education know to look out for this child to find out where she was? She was never given an education. She was used as a, as, as a virtual servant slave. There are easy easy ways to fix this country. We have the ability, the opportunity, the people, the know-how. Listen, you have to decide. You either continue with this madness and this ship sink, or we try. So many people send this video. I am amazed how many versions of it exist. Thank you guys. Them and the system. Vote them out. I know you know. Every time I hear Kabuto, I think about Faris. Faris and the children and the guns.
But I want to leave you with that. Eh? The welfare of the people is the primary responsible of government. It's the reason government exists. I want you to write that down. I want you to post that on your status on Facebook. The welfare of the people is the primary responsibility of government. People must come first. Citizens by right. No, no, we are worse. Yellow, black, or white. Give people reason. Get ready. It's just a puppy show. Mama guy, puppy show. All bandit must go. You know, I was laughing. There are people in this country. There are people in this country who are proud that the PNM abuse them. Defend the abuse. Don't give me any Stockholm Syndrome. Don't write, don't write it. Don't write Stockholm Syndrome on my wall. But it's funny. And I don't know what to do to get them to understand that they are defending the people doing them the most wrong. And I don't know how, but we have some years, and I'm gonna try. I mean, the government could collapse and we get an election this year, but I'm trying, and I'm trying. And I'm asking all of you, each and every one of you, put the racism, the tribalism, the classism, put all the isms aside. You don't have to like people to row in the same direction. You don't have to like people to save each other's lives. You don't have to. It's not about all of we loving each other. It's a perfect world and that'd be an ideal. But right now, let's just be willing to work together. Get beyond the obstacles. And listen, I'm asking you, think it through. Start to get into the conversations. Don't fight, don't argue. You'll recognize if you're talking to a fool or a sycophant or a troll or just go the other way. But where you can make an impact in any conversation, say, listen, you and I have rights as citizens of this country. We, you and I, have rights. And if we are not getting those rights met, then the people who have been charged with securing them are violating them. And we have a responsibility to ourselves and this greater collective called Trinidad and Tobago to act in its defense. The welfare of the people is the only responsibility of the government. That is their job. And anywhere, one person suffering, all of us can be happy. The country that we want is within our grasp. Everything that we tell you that we will do could have been done 55 years ago. Could have been done 25 years ago. Could have been done five years ago. The Chinese say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now. Get yourself ready. Organize your community. Organize your family. Organize your neighborhood. Organize the company you're working in. This is not a cult. This is a common sense approach to redeveloping Trinidad and Tobago. Our plan is to reboot the Republic. We're going back to the Constitution for law. We will undo and redo, start over what needs to start over, repeal and abolish what needs to go. Trinidad and Tobago has every right to a bright and prosperous future. And we in the Progressive Reformer Party, that is our one commitment to give that to you. Until I see you again, stay safe Trinidad and Tobago.